I'm, I'm here on farm. I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop in an ITN news report in a bit, but we're doing a video for, IT, well, a video, a film for ITN. Reporter, camera crew, and NFU spokesman. We're gonna be talking about fly tipping. As you well know, I've got a big issue with fly tipping on this farm. So we're gonna do a bit of filming and chat about it, and I'll drop that into the end of this video, all right? Crack on. Uh, Mike <laughs> me up. Uh, yeah. So you, your role here is you're in, tell us what you do. Yeah, so I am an environment advisor at the NFU, so I cover the South region, and I'm here to support because fly tipping is a huge issue across the whole country. Um, two thirds of farmers are affected by fly really? tipping, and I think last year in public spaces there was only over a million cases of fly tipping. Wow. That doesn't even consider fly tipping on private land, and it just has such negative effects on farmers and takes a financial and emotional toll. Yeah, totally. totally. Yeah. Thank Not you. good. Well, good good for coming. Yeah. I'm going to speak to this chap here. So you've got... Hello. Hello, mate. You've got a, a camera here. So you use a stills camera as a... Yeah, so well, yeah, we're sort of moving over towards these mirrorless cameras. So that's right. an A7S III. So it's a bit so, smaller than our big old broadcast yeah, cameras. Yeah, well, that we used do to you use. not use those broadcast cameras anymore? I still have one in the car, right. just in case. But, but that's um, old school now, is it? It's a bit old school, but it right. has its place sort of for, for, you know, fast news stuff yeah. and, you know, things like that. It's, uh, it can still be used, but this is just gets, you get a nice picture out of it. It's better for your back. Right, yeah, well, <laughs> and you can take photographs afterwards. You can do stills with it as well, but yeah. you have to sort of rig it out a little bit to to get it to do what you want it to do. And you've customised it with this special wooden grippy oh, handle. Yeah, yeah. That's little, nice. Wooden handle. So you don't mind me asking, what, what, ooh, that's, <laughs> that's one for AI. What, what's the value of a camera like that? Ooh, you know what, it's, it's about sort of 3,000 pounds for, for, the, for the camera, I would say. Wow, and, and, and the, the tripod? Tripod. Because that's a big professional yeah, one, isn't it? Heavy duty. Six, 700 quid. Is it? Wow. Um, it's a, uh, Thankfully, nice bit of kit, isn't it? ITVs and, and uh, not on ITV way. pay for it. Well, that's all right. So well that's, done. That's always good. Right. Yeah, well, yeah, it's good. nice bit of kit. So we'll get Mike. Oh, yeah, so I just noticed the logo on there. <laughs> so we'll get mic'd up and then we'll be chatting. Absolutely, yeah. And Hattie is the really woman for the job, aren't you? You know what you're talking about, well, don't you? I try to. So <laughs> have you um, have you dealt with a lot of problems like this around here? No, area? not so much. So in my old role, I hmm. used to work for the council in environment protection, yeah. and it's a huge issue. But again, as we were talking about earlier, it's so hard to be able to pin who it's on. Yeah. Um, very rarely people get prosecuted. Hmm. So it's almost about sorting it at source. Right. So stopping yeah. people from using companies that aren't licensed. Right. Um, so yeah, it's always That's a key thing, the isn't license it? of the waste carrier mm. you're using to prevent this happening as much as possible. I'm sure that's a mass massive reason why it's increased a lot is that people are trying to make a fast buck. Yeah. And uh, it's Facebook Marketplace is a classic place to go on there and say, I do clearance and stuff. And also it? everyone wants everything new all the time. Mm. And so there's a lot more waste in yeah. general, even packaging, things like that. Yeah. It's, just, it's crazy. Huge right, we're gonna. You, we, have you got a mic me up or is that yeah, we're yeah, just we, chatting? Dave's oh, getting his mic. Oh, you are not right. A fluffy mic for you. Nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, all right. Okay, so how long? Let me ask you a question. How long have you been doing reports for ITN? Oh, what do you reckon about eight, eight, nine years? Yeah, have you always yeah, done the uh, southwest region, or have you done? I was in uh, Cardiff right. for a while, yeah. and then uh, Bristol. Then back to Cardiff, right. back to Bristol. But yeah, mainly mainly Bristol I right. so this is a rare treat for me to is come it? out to the uh, and get your well is dirty got the well is dirty yeah. Yeah. <laughs> first time I've got the jacket on as well so you know, it's all new <laughs> it's okay, well then uh, right I'll turn this off now all right. that's great so we're just setting up Hattie's doing her bit I, I've just done my little interview bit so I do it in sections and then they'll edit it all together I bet you so we recorded probably five ten minutes of footage I bet you only about two minutes well 30 seconds to get used so just getting some shots of the cows. Anyway, we're gonna just, I'm just gonna switch this off now and edit in the bit of ITV local news. So this is going out at six o'clock in the evening UK time. Um, so sit back and watch the clips that made it on <laughs> onto the screen. Yeah, exactly. And also, sometimes because you can find out where all the waste has come from, but it might be a little old lady who has paid someone News in the West Country with Alex Lovell and Sabet Chowdhury. Hello and welcome.
welcome to ITV News West Country. Thank you for joining us. The headlines this Monday evening. A dairy farmer in South Gloucestershire warns a tidal wave of dumped rubbish is putting his livestock at risk. You clear it and then you go along the road and another month later there's another sofa or there's someone else's rubbish or whatever. Also tonight, a new survey finds thousands of veterans are struggling to ask for help with mental health. Tributes are paid to Blaze, the heroic police horse who braved the Bristol riots and helped keep crowds safe. And after storm Kathleen over the weekend, we're not quite out of the woods yet. Still some wet and windy weather to come. And I'll be back with all the details a little later in the programme. A very good evening. First tonight, a tidal wave that's putting livestock at risk. That's how one farmer in South Gloucestershire has described the rise in fly tipping. Richard Cornock has farmed in the same village for 40 years and says he's never seen it this bad. Well, in the last 12 months alone, the number of fly tipping cases rose to 50,000 right across the southwest. That's why so many people, so why, why are so many people dumping rubbish in our countryside and is there anything being done to stop it? Max Walsh has been investigating. Now if that got in a cow's stomach, if that went for a mower, that would be horrendous. This is just the latest pile of rubbish thrown onto Richard's land over a hedge a couple of weeks ago. Along with his son Harry, he now has to decide how best to dispose of it, costing him time and money. But in his 40 years farming here in Tidrington, he says the problem is getting worse. What's changed in that time is now I'm seeing all sorts of refuse and I'm seeing trailer loads of lorry tires. I've seen someone's ripped out a kitchen and dumped that. Some of that went in our field. Everything, you name it, it's become almost like a tidal wave and, and you get, you clear it and then you go along the road and another month later there's another sofa or there's someone else's rubbish or whatever. The items continue to appear and pile up, with Richard recording the worst cases himself. Oh my God, look at this. It has an emotional impact too, as he fights to protect his land and livestock from permanent harm. As I walked round the corner, I couldn't believe the devastation. It was just a sea of filth, really awful. And when rubbish is dumped on private land like Richard's, it's his responsibility to clean it up. The National Farmers Union says that shouldn't be the case and estimates two thirds of farmers across the country have been affected by this. What can farmers do to, to kind of stop this? Fly tipping is a huge issue for farmers um, and it shouldn't really be their responsibility to um, prevent fly tipping. It should be resolved at source, therefore it is the public's duty, it's their household duty of care to ensure that they know if they are disposing of waste, that they are using licensed companies. They advise farmers to keep their land tidy, locked and well lit to help deter fly tippers. But the burden, the NFU insists, shouldn't be on them. The government says fly tipping is an inexcusable crime, spoiling communities and threatening the countryside. As of this month, they've introduced new rules to combat the crime, including raising fines from £400 to £1,000. And South Gloucestershire Council is urging people to report all cases of fly tipping, so those responsible can be prosecuted, giving farmers like Richard a chance of stopping them. Well, Max, who you saw there is uh, in the studio with us now. Max, just how rare are prosecutions against people who fly tip? Well, they are very rare, with only a tiny fraction of fly tipping incidents actually leading to any prosecutions at all. And it's why farmers like Richard become frustrated when they're repeatedly on the receiving end of this. Councils do have the option of handing out fixed penalty notices, but South Gloucestershire councils say they prioritise prosecution so they can publicise cases to try and deter offenders. They have seen some success with this, prosecuting 18 people last year, yet this is only about 1% of the 1,800 incidents that happened. This is what they had to say about some of those cases. Some of those fly tippers committed multiple offences um, in our area, neighbouring areas from that point of view, um, one of which I know was prolific, went to court recently, you know, we were able to secure a 36-week suspended prison sentence against him 
And another one that we dealt with recently who was also active in rural areas, um, depositing off um, uh, used cooking oil uh, drums and things like that. Um, so we, we caught him. Um, he admitted a number of offences that, that he'd, um, he'd committed. Um, and um, he got a total of a £4,500 fine. Now, this is not just a problem in South Gloucestershire, but right across the country. If we look at the South West, where there were 50,000 fly tipping incidents last year, we can see just how some of those were prosecuted. Back in 2018, just 1.6% of incidents were prosecuted. But fast forward five years, and after some spikes, that number is now at 3.5%. The challenge facing the authorities in rural areas, especially is the lack of CCTV cameras and witnesses. So the focus for many councils has been on targeting those repeat offenders, as you just heard, but also to emphasise to households that it's their responsibility to ensure people disposing of their waste have a waste carrier licence, and that can easily be checked on the government website. OK, Max. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's the trouble. It's the difference, isn't it, between somebody chucking some stuff out of their car and then the kind of professional waste throwers. Mm. Uh, we were talking about it all afternoon, weren't we, saying how we li both live in quite rural areas, how frustrating it is. You do see it a lot. Um, you know, have you seen it? Take some pictures of it, send it to us, um, what's around you at the moment, because, um, because it is getting worse. Yeah, it's pretty bad. So let us know your thoughts.